Hello everyone, this is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about sub frenzy and dom frenzy. So for those of you who don't know, sub frenzy or dom frenzy is what happens oftentimes when people are new or introduced to BDSM for the first time and they get almost like a kid in a candy store. They just become so overwhelmed and thrilled at all the options that they are presented with, the ability to pursue dreams and fantasies that they have had for probably their whole lives that they've never been able to express before. Just even not being able to contemplate the sheer kinds of play that are out there, the types of scenes and relationships that are out there that they never even knew that they wanted but that they're suddenly being introduced to and all of it sounds really awesome and cool and just wanting to do all of it right now and especially for people who have had a lot of fantasies build up over the years that they haven't been able to express with anybody else. When you finally get to do that, it's just like you gotta do all of it right now, right now, right now. But what people who are in this state of sub frenzy or dom frenzy or top frenzy don't realize is that once you're in the BDSM scene isn't going anywhere or at least I can't reasonably reasonably think of a way or how the BDSM scene would just suddenly disappear in the next six months. Once you're in and once you've gotten that confidence to go to your first party or make a FetLife account the only thing that's really stopping you from keeping and going and continuing to be a part of that is you. So you can take the time to slow down. You can take the time to consciously think about the kinds of scenes that you're doing. Because that's what Sub Frenzy does, is because you get so overwhelmed by all of the options that you have and all the things that you can do and the possibilities that you could pursue that you do too much play so you're overwhelming your body. You're oftentimes having really, really bad sub drop because you haven't had the experience to learn how to do proper aftercare. You're skipping aftercare or rushing through it to go ahead and do the next scene or play with the next person. You're not properly taking the time to vet or evaluate potential partners before you play with them because oftentimes a lot of Oftentimes people will just go to parties and meet somebody and then play right away and not really ask any questions about how they play. They're just like, oh, you know how to do rope? I've always wanted to try to do rope. Let's do it. And then they go right ahead and move along. This can also happen, especially when a new submissive pairs up with a new dom and then together they go down like the rabbit hole of BDSM as quickly as they possibly can because neither one of them have kind of really learned the patient aspect of BDSM and a lot of the softer skills around negotiation and that it does usually take a lot of time to properly negotiate for a scene, to properly set up a scene and especially if it's something that's more nuanced and involved than just a simple spanking, it can very easily lead to potential emotional hurt, it can lead to lack of trust or trust damage and it's something that we think that I think we do a pretty good job of talking about in the community and especially in the real life community if people are taking those opportunities to go to beginners events and munches and tasters this idea will be presented in some form or a more experienced member of the community may take the person under the wing or they may become friends with people who are more experienced who are able to learn and point out these signs and let the person know or give them advice on how to handle it better, just kind of be cognitively aware that this is something that can happen. So I think we do a pretty good job of introducing that concept. Now I do want to note as well, for those of you who haven't seen my previous video where I've talked about the frenzy and dom frenzy, dom frenzy pretty much exhibits all of those same factors. However, oftentimes it's less common because even though a dom or a top can be equally enthusiastic and equally really, really wanting to just do everything in the scene, Usually people are less willing to play with a brand new dominant or a brand new top than they are willing to play with a brand new submissive or a brand new bottom. Why is that? Well, we could philosophize about that all day, but that's not what I want to get into in this video, although maybe we'll talk about it in the future. What I want to talk about today is the concept of sub frenzy and dom frenzy existing outside of just the beginning part of somebody's introduction to BDSM. Because while we do talk about it and while we do present the idea, even I myself, even at the beginning of this video, I talked about it in the context of when people are first starting out in BDSM. 
But in my observation, I think this can happen in more places than just the beginning. It's certainly the most common place, but it's not the only one. And because we put this expectation of something, this is something that only happens to newbies. This is something that only happens to beginners. People who have had a couple of years of experience in the scene when they are introduced new concepts, new relationship styles, when they kind of evolve in BDSM, although I hate that term because BDSM is not a hierarchy or a staircase or anything, but when you go deeper down the rabbit hole in kink, you can have very similar experiences to sub frenzy all over again. So I want to make sure that we talk about that that's something that can happen, how it might be different from a beginner who experiences sub frenzy, and just how to generally stay aware in our everyday BDSM relationships when we're going to parties and going and doing scenes that we can kind of monitor ourselves to make sure that we're not pushing ourselves or not trying to rush things or you know doing the things that sub frenzy or dom frenzy often causes us to do. So what happens besides just when people are first starting in BDSM is when you get introduced to something that is new to you like, usually it's a more general category of BDSM. You can have experiences of some frenzy where you never realized, oh my god, that kind of play. I've never done it before. I didn't realize how much I liked it or I didn't realize how much I enjoyed power exchange. I thought I was just a bottom. You can have the sub frenzy start all over again. So for example, you could be somebody who has been a bottom for five years, 10 years, always thought power exchange is not for me. I'm not the kind of person who likes power exchange. I don't like having somebody own me or control me. I'm my own person. I just happen to also be a masochist and I'm kind of a little bit bratty, but only in scenes, not in a power exchange way. And then suddenly you find the right person or you go to a convention, you take a class about DS or you become friends with people who are in a really intense DS relationship that you admire. And maybe you start exploring your own DS relationship. Maybe you find a partner who starts out as a top but then over time becomes your dom and you find yourself sort of naturally falling into this DS and then you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize how awesome DS was. I want to do this. I'm going to have these rules and I want him to be able to do this and this and this and this and this. By the way, if I'm using gender terminology at any point in this video, please substitute your preferred pronouns. I do not in any way believe that BDSM roles are at all restricted by somebody's gender identity or their sexuality. That is just crazy. But going more back to the point, what can happen is you just suddenly get so overwhelmed by this new thing. It's like, you know, a whole new world, sing the song from Aladdin type of moment where you're just like, this thing that was missing is now here and I want to do it and I'm going to keep going and going and going. And especially if you're on the S side of things and you have a dominant who is more used to that kind of play than you are or more used to that level of power exchange than you are, it can almost be like a rush to catch up with them or a rush to get to what point they are at. So for example, if you're somebody who is a bottom and has just been introduced to BDSM by somebody who has had 15 years of experience with 24 seven live and submissives, it can oftentimes feel like you just want to rush to get to that point and that is your destined space in the universe. You were meant to be a live in 24 seven submissive and you totally could be, but you don't have to get there in a month. <laughs> and even if you have been doing bottoming for five or 10 years or however long, while some of those skills are transferable, you still need to go back and rely on the fundamentals of good BDSM. And that does mean taking the time to sit and very thoroughly negotiate the scenes that you're doing, the type of power exchange that you're doing, how you anticipate the relationship evolving, making sure that you are on the same page about rules and punishments and expectations and what you ultimately want to get out of the relationship, how it impacts your vanilla life. Is it going to be 24 seven or not? Are you eventually going to get to that point? There's so many questions to consider whenever you introduce something, be it DS, be it a new form of impact play, be it starting with bondage, so many things to consider. And it's not something that is worth rushing into, at least for your long-term well-being. Slowing down, pausing and staying mindful of like, I don't have to be the world's subbiest sub tomorrow afternoon. I can do it in my own time. Because what you risk doing is if you rush into a brand new thing that you don't have a lot of experience in, if you're not 
kind of used to sitting with your emotions after those types of scenes or to kind of being able to understand the feelings that get brought up in those types of scenes, you risk burning out your passion for whatever that thing is. So for example, if you were starting on a DS for the first time and you suddenly tried to go from like, I just started some bedroom submission to 24 seven living submissive in like a week, by the end of that week, you could go like, how did I get here? What am I doing? I'm completely exhausted. I haven't talked to anybody outside in two days. The only thing that I have done is clean the floor with a toothbrush and I ate some gruel off the floor and that's all I have done. What is my life? This is so overwhelming. I can't handle it anymore. Ah, and like it can cause like just all of a sudden super massive sub drop and doubt and not really knowing. Whereas if you're kind of pacing all of these things out and slowly working towards a higher level of submission or, or getting more deep into this type of play it's just it's gonna work out better and this is by no means exclusive to people who were introducing ds for the first time it can definitely happen if you were introducing a new kind of sensation based play or pain based play as well like for myself I have recently discovered that I really, really, really like thuddy way more than I thought that I like thuddy play. I literally ruled it out of any play that I would do could not have thuddy in it for almost the whole time I've been in PDSM because I thought through experiences I had had for like the first six months to a year of me participating in play that I didn't like thuddy because of the types of toys that were being used. However, as it turns out, Certain types of study toys on certain parts of my body feel really, really, really good, more so than stinky pain does. And when I discovered that, I kind of found myself going through a bit of a sub frenzy like experience, which is why I wanted to make this video is because it's like, holy shit, it's I've been in this scene for how long now and I'm starting to experience sub frenzy all over again? How has no one ever mentioned that before? And so for me, what ended up happening is because this was this new kind of sensation play, I went online, I did like six hours worth of online shopping, I bookmarked all of these stores I wanted to check out, I bookmarked all these places where I could get the impact play toys, I was constantly thinking of new scene ideas, it was like the thing that I wanted to do more so than almost any other BDSM activity, which especially for a relationship where we have a lot of variety in our play, we can't just do impact play all the time. Otherwise, my dominant is not getting his needs met and fundamentally, even if I don't realize it, I'm not getting my needs met because I also have a lot of other aspects to my submission besides this newly found masochism that I have. Okay, so how do you recognize this is happening and how can you prevent it from happening? I would say you can't really prevent it so much as you can just stay aware of when it's happening and kind of monitor it and, and talk about it with your partner and they kind of almost force you to slow down because hey BDSM usually involves at least one other person so there is somebody else who can kind of control the valve of how much of that particular kind of BDSM play is happening kind of almost force you to take it slowly if you're unable to do it all on your own but I would kind of monitor yourself for any like invasive thoughts or obsessive thoughts about something like is it the only thing that you think about is it the only thing that you want to do are you like reading about it 24 7 is it impacting the other elements of your dynamic that are existing is it the only thing that you can have a conversation about is it something where you are maybe pushing boundaries that you would have never done before? So for example, you introduce yourself to DS and most of your hard limits become soft limits and your soft limits suddenly become green because they're in the context of DS. And you may find that that happens for you. You can do more things in a DS context, but you probably shouldn't be doing them all at once. Uh, you could, of course, also become more fluid with how you negotiate in terms of you may be willing to play with people who specialize in the kind of play that you're really really passionate about without being able to vet them the way that you would maybe other kinds of play or with other partners that you've had before do you rush in to play at pickup parties are you pushing your body to be able to do more scenes so for example maybe you are used to only being able to do one scene a week or two scenes a week or something and you find that that prevents you from having bad sub drop or bad top drop 
Whereas maybe when this new thing gets introduced, you want to do it every single day or you want to do it as frequently as possible. And those are all just things that I would be aware of can happen. Basically, if it's something that becomes the sole focus of your interest in BDSM to the point of being almost kind of obsessed with it, you may be ex experiencing sub frenzy or dom frenzy part two, a aka you're having it but not at the beginning of your experience in in BDSM. Of course, there are a ton more signs to look out for besides what I've just mentioned for sub frenzy or dom frenzy because depending on what you're introducing yourself to, there could be specific things that are happening that could be signs of sub frenzy and everybody has their own individual way that they do BDSM so it is a little bit specific to you and what BDSM means to you and what you're pursuing along that kinky journey. In terms of actually mitigating this, like I said before, I don't really think there's like a cure or a way to like stop it and just be like, okay, no more sub frenzy. I think it's just a process of acknowledging that it's happening and reminding yourself that you really don't need to rush. The BDSM community is not gonna disappear tomorrow. It's still gonna be here. You're still gonna be able to find play partners to pursue this with. You're still gonna have your new DS relationship a week, a month, a year from now, if it's really something that is meant to happen. So just stay aware of that and just remind yourself like, this is a really, really new, exciting thing. And in order to have the best experience possible, even if you've had a lot of experience, it is worth it to slow down, listen to your body really, really intuitively and kind of just checking in and being like, can my body really handle this right now? Am I making the right decision about this play partner? Is the potential, is there a potential that I could regret this in the future? Am I pushing myself uh, past emotional or mental boundaries that I have that may be unsafe for me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of things that you could be on the lookout for there and just say to yourself because I really like mantras and I'm a big believer in saying mantras and just reminding yourself from replacing invasive thoughts is just whenever you feel really overwhelmed with the desire to do something or you're feeling like you're being spread out in a million different directions by your like want to do this one thing it's just being I have time I have time just remind yourself that you have time that it will still be there, that it's not gonna run away and leave you, you're not missing out on anything. You're being smart and you're helping yourself have a better experience by taking that time to slow down. Anyways, that's all I really wanted to cover in today's video. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know down in the comment section below. Links to related videos and my social media and everything will be down in the description box. If you like this video and you haven't already, please do subscribe. I make videos twice a week. And if you really like this video, I do recommend you check out my patreon i have a ton of cool perks on there i have exclusive videos and chats and one-on-one -on -one consultations and a bunch of other stuff so please do check that out if you would like link will be down in the description box as well and until i see you guys next time i hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week Bye bye